This video includes a paid sponsorship from Span, but more on that later. Between Tesla's recent investors conference call and their Gigafactory Nevada factory expansion announcement, I have a bunch of new and exciting 4680 battery updates for you. As I go through each one of these updates, I'm going to be providing extra context to really put these details in perspective. So stick around, you're not gonna wanna miss this. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. In case you missed it, Tesla just announced a huge $3.6 billion plus investment that they're going to spend to expand their Gigafactory in Nevada. And this expansion will not only include a section for high volume semi-truck manufacturing, but Tesla is also building in a new um, capacity to build 100 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries per year at this facility as well. In regards to this announcement, here's a portion of what Tesla said in an official blog post on their website. We will be investing over $3.6 billion more to continue growing Gigafactory Nevada, adding 3,000 new team members and two new factories, a 100 gigawatt hour 4680 cell factory with capacity to produce produce enough batteries for 2 million light duty vehicles annually, as well as our first high volume semi factory. With that being said, it's great to see Gigafactory Nevada finally reaching its full potential. And with this expansion, hopefully it will surpass what was originally planned in the past for this factory. For example, as Electrek reported in this November 2020 article, apparently Tesla's original plans for this factory were to produce around 105 gigawatt hours of battery cells per year. Once Tesla is able to add these 4680 production lines to Gigafactory Nevada and fully ramp them up to 100 gigawatt hours per year, that plus what Panasonic is building right now, their 37 plus gigawatt hours of 2170 batteries per year, that will surpass um, Tesla's original plan for production at this factory, at least according to that number that Electric quoted back in 2020. Now, Gigafactory Nevada first started production back in 2017, and this is a slide that was shared by Tesla and Elon Musk at an event announcing the Gigafactory Nevada expansion. Tesla mentioned that 7.3 billion 2170 battery cells have been built at this factory, 1.5 million battery packs, 3.6 million drive units, and 1 million energy modules, and they have a picture there of the power wall. Elon Musk did speak at this Gigafactory Nevada expansion announcement event, and uh, I want to dive into some of the comments that he made that really provide further context and more details about this. But before I do that, I want to introduce the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to Span for sponsoring this video. If you're currently considering a solar and battery backup installation at your home, or if you are looking to upgrade your current electric panel, you definitely need to check out Span. Replace your old electrical panel with a SPAN smart panel to access remote circuit level control and energy generation and usage monitoring with their iOS or Android app. With all of the data that this smart panel will allow you to have at your fingertips, you'll be able to use that data to make smarter energy usage decisions and even possibly save on your energy bills. To find out more and get a quote for your particular situation, go over to span.io or click the link in the video description. And when you do fill out that form to get a quote, make sure that you put cleaner watt in the comments section so they know that I sent you. Okay, moving on to some of the comments that Elon Musk made at this Gigafactory Nevada expansion announcement event. Elon said the following, we're going to do our high volume semi-truck manufacturing here. And then we're also adding 100 gigawatt hours of Tesla 4680 cell manufacturing here. And that's just to start. I think long term, we may do as much as 500 gigawatt hours. Now expanding from 100 gigawatt hours to 500 gigawatt hours of 4680 battery production at this facility would either require a new additional building to be added or moving some of the other production that Tesla is doing at this factory to say a different facility. I say that because if you look at the pictures that Tesla shared at the Gigafactory Nevada expansion announcement event, you can see that with the portions they have allocated for various aspects of production there at Gigafactory Nevada, that completely fills out the expansion of this first building. I guess in the future, Tesla could move some of the production that's happening at Gigafactory Nevada when it comes to the non-battery portion of production. They could move that to a separate building or a separate location. But nonetheless, it does appear like in order to get to 500 gigawatt hours per year, a separate building would be needed. 
Now, of course, at battery day, Tesla hoped that in 2022, they would be able to produce somewhere around 100 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries. Of course, 2022 is now past us. And when it comes to what Tesla is doing right now, according to an official update posted on Tesla's Twitter account, Recently, the Tesla cell team was able to produce 868,000 battery cells in seven days. As I showed in the past, if you extrapolate that out to an annual run rate, that's enough for around 54,000 plus Model Ys with structural battery packs to be built per year. And when you use the 86.5 watt hours per 4680 battery cell, as was revealed by the limiting factor on YouTube, that equates to just under four gigawatt hours of battery production per year, which of course is a run rate of only 4% of their initial goal. Now, going back to Elon Musk's comments at the Gigafactory Nevada expansion announcement event, Elon Musk once again reiterated that goal to get to potentially uh, three terawatt hours of batteries being produced per year. And in addition, at this event, Elon Musk made a very interesting comment when he said they will also be using 4680 for stationary storage as well. This is definitely something that I thought might be a strong possibility, but it makes complete sense for Tesla to do this because not all the batteries that come off of a production line are grade A battery cells, meaning that they meet the performance requirements for electric vehicles. Um, and this will allow Tesla to use the B-grade 4680 battery cells in their power walls, which will be totally suitable for this application. And it makes a lot of sense too, because if they're producing these 4680 batteries at Gigafactory Nevada, and they're also producing the power walls there, that would make the most logical sense to use these batteries in the power walls. Now, one of the big takeaways that I got from this event comes down to the fact that when they shared this photo showing the current footprint of the factory and the new additional expansion, you can see just how small compared to the rest of the factory, the 4680 cell portion will be. Much in part due to Tesla's dry electro manufacturing processes that they're currently pioneering, much in part to that and really some other uh, improvements as well, but Tesla is able to build 4680 battery production facilities much smaller than would be necessary if they were using wet processes and producing a smaller batteries, for instance. With all of Tesla's 4680 battery innovations combined, according to Tesla and a slide that they shared at Battery Day, this should allow for a 10 times smaller footprint per gigawatt hour over existing manufacturing technology. To me, this reveals that Tesla still has confidence in their dry electro manufacturing process because I don't think they would be able to build 100 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries in that small of a space unless they had confidence in this technology. As a reminder, at last check, Tesla seemed to be able to reliably produce their anodes with a dry process, but they were still having issues with the cathode side of the battery. So once again, with a small amount of space allocated for 4680 battery production at Gigafactory Nevada, this sure makes it appear like Tesla has confidence in this dry electrode process. Okay, so now moving over to Tesla's Q4 2022 investors conference call, here are some of the highlights about 4680 batteries and some of the comments that were made during this conference call. In regards to Gigafactory Texas 4680 battery production, Drew Baglino during this call said the following, as far as where we stand in Texas, one of four lines are in production with the remaining three in stages of commissioning and install. This really does help confirm some of the information that I've talked about in the past. For instance, that Gigafactory Texas um, has four lines that they're building out and this was confirmed by Drew during the conference call. And I was told that each one of these production lines was designed to produce 25 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. So a total of 100 gigawatt hours, which of course is a very impressive output number, especially when you consider once again, the size of this particular portion of the factory. Because for instance, with Panasonic's 2170 battery production at Gigafactory Nevada, they currently have 14 production lines and with those 14 lines, they're able to produce 37 plus gigawatt hours of batteries per year. Now do note, based on what I was told previously by a very reliable source, um, Panasonic's newest 2170 battery production lines at Gigafactory Nevada are able to produce somewhere around 80% or so more batteries per day than the original lines. And that would equate to a run rate over four gigawatt hours per year per line for these new production lines, or if you divide 37 gigawatt hours by 14 production lines, that would be an average for all the lines combined of 2.64 gigawatt hours of batteries per year per line. So Tesla being able to produce 25 gigawatt hours of batteries in a single line is of course very impressive when put in perspective. 
Now, when it comes to what 2023 should look like with a production ramp of 4680 batteries, um, we kind of have to read between the lines just a bit, but Drew Baglino mentioned about their 2023 goal, quote, really our 2023 goal as a 4680 team is to deliver a cost-effective ramp of 4680s well ahead of Cybertruck. He went on to say, focus areas are dialing in and improving the quality of the high volume supply mechanical parts and driving factory process yields up as much as possible. He then reiterated, between the two of those things, if we achieve those key goals, we'll be well set up for a major 4680 year in 2024. So with these comments made by Drew, it appears like Tesla is not banking on manufacturing a large number of 4680 batteries in 2023, but 2024 seems to be the year when they really hope to ramp this up quite a bit. Now notice that Drew said that their goal for 4680 battery production was to keep ahead of the Cybertruck ramp. So if we can figure out Tesla's goals for the Cybertruck in 2023, that can really help us with our expectations of 4680 battery production. In regards to the Cybertruck, during the conference call, Elon Musk said, quote, for 2023, Cybertruck will not be a significant contributor, but it will be next year. Elon went on to say, we do expect production to start sometime this summer. And then he clarified, I always try to downplay the start of production because the start of production is always very slow. So if Tesla's 4680 goals for 2023 are to just beat the ramp up of the Cybertruck, and the Cybertruck's not really planning to ramp up very much in 2023. Once again, this leads me to believe that Tesla is not banking on a large amount of 4680 battery production in 2023, but they're really building out for a huge amount of production in 2024. And once again, that really does make a lot of sense because it does take a while to ramp up battery production lines, especially for a company like Tesla that doesn't have a lot of past experience producing batteries. The batteries, once again, that are produced at Gigafactory Nevada are made by Panasonic. So Tesla is new to the battery manufacturing business. And while production rates of the 4680 batteries are lower than expected, Tesla appears to still be making steady progress. So it's not something we should be worried about, but we need to temper our expectations for 2023 based on comments that were made in this conference call. Now, during this call, the question was also brought up about where the 100 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries would be allocated. And Drew reiterated, quote, not all of the 100 gigawatt hours are going to go into the semi trucks. Elon Musk added to that, I alluded to a number of future products. Those future products would use the 4680. Now, one of the last big topics that I want to cover that was mentioned during the conference call has to do with the Inflation Reduction Act manufacturing credits for battery cells and battery packs. During the call, the question about how much Tesla would benefit from these credits was brought up. And Elon Musk said, quote, long term, we expect the value of these credits to be very significant. Elon then went on to say, in the case of Panasonic, we're splitting the value of those credits. So the value of the credits this year will not be gigantic but we think it probably will be very significant in the future. When it comes to 2023 and how much Tesla expects to get from these credits initially, Zachary Kirkhorn mentioned the regulations here are still in flux and there continues to be updates. So this is just our best understanding at the moment, but we think on the order of 150 million to 250 million per quarter this year as our volumes grow. Tesla has the opportunity to get around $45 per kilowatt hour when you combine the credit for the battery cell manufacturing and battery pack manufacturing. So if you do the math at a scale of 100 gigawatt hours per year, fully ramped up, that means Tesla could recoup around $4.5 billion in credits per year fully ramped up, which is of course more than Tesla plans to spend to expand the factory. And that's to build out not only battery cell production, but also Tesla semi production. So these credits really have the potential to make a big difference and change the math completely when it comes to the cost of battery manufacturing. Now, as a reminder, these credits apparently go through 2029 and they start to phase out in 2030 on, and they should be completely phased out after 2032. But nonetheless, it appears like Tesla is going to benefit quite a bit from these credits. At the end of the day, despite 4680 battery production progress being slower than expected, Tesla is still guiding for 1.8 million plus vehicles in 2023. And Elon Musk mentioned in the call that there is a slight possibility of surpassing 1.8 million vehicles and maybe even hitting around 2 million vehicles. Of course, much of this growth will be thanks to Tesla's outside suppliers like CATL, who have been supplying lithium iron phosphate batteries to Tesla, which do make up a large portion of their sales, especially in international markets 
like China. And due to the fact that even a small number of 4680 battery production, like for instance, four gigawatt hours per year, once again, that's still enough for say 50,000 Model Ys per year. So as that ramps up, um, even 4680 batteries at small numbers will make a difference when it comes to their total battery supply. Every little bit helps. While I wish Tesla would have given a few more updates about the dry electrode process and how they were doing with that, um, it does appear like Tesla is still confident that 4680 batteries will ramp up and be produced in meaningful scale in 2024. And while this is later than I hoped, in the long run, it really doesn't matter. I would love to hear what you think about all this in the comments section below, so feel free to let me know there. And also, I want to say a special thank you once again to Span for sponsoring this video, and also to the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make these videos possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.